Okay, it smells amazing. Let's see how our miso glazed pot roast turned out. Oh my gosh, that smells so good. My miso glazed pot roast is a souvenir I brought back from our four years of living in Okinawa, Japan. Miso is a fermented soybean paste. It has a deep, salty, rich umami flavor. Umami means like meaty. It has a very meaty flavor. And so it didn't take me long while living in Okinawa to find all kinds of uses for miso paste. It turns out miso paste makes the classic American pot roast even better. I'm going to show you my very easy miso glazed pot roast recipe today. And I'm also going to put together a big pot of mashed potatoes. One of my teenagers actually got braces today. And while I usually make a roasted potato to go with our pot roast, today definitely some mashed potatoes are in order. I'm just turning my burner to a medium high heat and we're going to get our pot roast ready by massaging one teaspoon of salt and one half teaspoon of pepper into a chuck roast. I love a chuck roast because they're so versatile. This chuck roast is about three and a half pounds. So I've got the chuck roast kind of uh, sitting here with salt and pepper on it. Now I'm going to put together a flour seasoning. I've got salt, pepper, and garlic powder in this bowl, and I'm adding just a little bit of flour. And that goes on a nice pan. This is a quarter sheet pan. Put the pot roast in the flour mixture my burner is nice and hot now. And in goes quarter cup of olive oil. You can use any oil you want. I've got a nice big cast iron pot here. One of my favorite kitchen, uh, kitchen tools. And that pot roast goes in the hot, hot oil. And we're gonna save this, okay? So don't throw it away. All it takes is about three minutes on each side to get a nice char, and while the roast is browning, get your vegetables ready. I usually use yellow onions, but I only have one yellow onion today, so I'm going to use my yellow onion and a red onion. For this recipe, the onions actually caramelize, so I'm just going to go ahead and chop these in little half moon sizes. A pastry scraper is a great way to pick up and move your sliced vegetables. I like about six garlic cloves in this recipe. This is my favorite way of peeling garlic. I just smash it with the mallet. And then it's easy to peel. I know other people have other methods that are probably uh, more efficient, but I find that to be actually quite therapeutic. <laughs> Just a few coarse chops. This garlic is going to cook down beautifully, so we don't need to get too fiddly by making the pieces very small. And then for a nice roast, I like to cut my carrots in half lengthwise and then in half widthwise. Now that our vegetables are prepped, it's time to make our slurry. And that's when we add the miso paste. In a medium mixing bowl, I am adding a quarter cup of miso paste, two cups of beef broth. I'm gonna move that miso paste around, whisk it, get it mixed up really well. And then remember how I said not to throw your dusting flour away. This seasoned flour is gonna go into our liquid here. And this is what's called a slurry. 
This is going to thicken as the roast cooks. And it's also going to make a delicious gravy. My chuck roast has browned nicely. And now I'm adding in my carrots, onions, and garlic. Pour in our miso slurry. This looks gorgeous and it smells amazing too. Now we're just gonna pop the top on the cast iron pot and we're going to put this in a very hot oven, 400 degrees for an hour and a half. While that is roasting, I'm going to put our mashed potatoes together and do just a little bit of cleanup. Whenever I make mashed potatoes, I like to test myself and see if I can peel and cut all the potatoes in the time it takes the water to boil, which is not that long because I have started with hot water and I've also put salt in the water, okay? Now, if you didn't know, whenever you buy one of these packages that has the mesh on each side and then a ribbon around, all you have to do to open them up and turn it into a little bowl is just rip the top like that. And then you actually have a little bowl. Isn't that amazing? Okay, my daughter figured that out, my oldest daughter. Okay, so I'm just gonna go as fast as I can here and peel these potatoes. This is actually how I became a very fast potato peeler. <laughs> but also because uh, I cook a lot of potatoes at one time. So the standard amount of potatoes that I make for mashed potatoes is five pounds. It's extremely important to have a very good high quality peeler. I've taught classes before where I have students who say, I'm so bad at peeling potatoes, I can just never do it, it's just the worst. And I'll say, well, um, how long have you had your potato peeler? And one of my students said, oh, about 25 years. And I said, well, get a new potato peeler and see if that helps. And sure enough, uh, it did, okay? So I get a really high quality potato peeler and you know what, they're not even that expensive. This one was like $7, okay? You can see it makes all the difference in the world. Also, I use long strokes towards me. Don't do this, okay? Although, if you do that and that works for you, that's fine. But I am making these primarily for my teenage daughter who got braces today. And I am kind of anticipating that her teeth and jaw might be a little bit sore. So I told her last night that we're definitely having mashed potatoes tonight. Okay, my water's almost boiling, so I really better hurry up now. I've got all my potatoes peeled. And for mashed potatoes, I try to keep all the pieces in kind of a uniform cut, so they all cook at about the same rate. Pick up with pastry scraper, and then I put them all in a bowl. Okay, now this is important. Since we are putting all these potatoes in this hot boiling water, we're not going to drop them from up here because then the boiling water will splash on us. But I have them in this bowl here. So I'm going to very gently place them just like so. The potatoes are gonna roll in, okay? And that's how you get them all in the bowl in good order, okay, without burning yourself. Although, do watch out for that steam, okay? And now we're just gonna boil these until they're barely fork tender, and then I'm gonna show you how I use my stand mixer to make a really, really good mashed potato in a fast, easy, and efficient way. This is how I test to see if my potatoes are ready to mash. If the potato can be easily crackled with a spoon. And what I mean by crackle is that it kind of breaks off into little shards. That is how you know that you are gonna have some great mashed potatoes. Don't let them cook so long that the mashed potatoes or that the pieces of potatoes are smushy. Okay, that's gonna make a very gluey mashed potato. So my potatoes are ready to be taken out of the hot water. Now, because I had so many years of little bitty children in the kitchen, I developed methods to where I wouldn't have to be carrying a hot boiling pot of water across the kitchen, okay? Because there was always somebody 
in the kitchen or playing on the floor. So I just use this slotted spoon. It's also called a spider. And I just lift all the potatoes, put them right into the bowl for my KitchenAid mixer. The paddle attachment for my mixer is going to do a great job of breaking apart all these pieces of cooked potato. We want to start whipping these before they cool down because we're gonna put butter in here. We want the butter to melt easily. Be sure to use your shield, especially if you have children in the kitchen, you don't want a hot potato flying out of your mixer. This is just a basic recipe for mashed potatoes, so I'm adding butter and I'll also add milk. I have other recipes for mashed potatoes that are really good, like a garlic mashed potato or a buttermilk mashed potato, but I'm just gonna keep it simple today. That was half a cup of butter and my potatoes are broken up in the smaller pieces, which is just fine. I'm going to add a whole cup of whole milk, about one half cup at a time. And now is when I really turn the speed on, as I like to say, whip the crap out of it. I'm gonna add my last bit of whole milk. And if I really want my mashed potatoes to be fluffy and whipped, I trade out the paddle attachment for the balloon whip attachment and I whip on high until they're as light and fluffy as I want them to be. Just gonna add some salt to finish here. Start with a teaspoon and work your way up. Always taste your food before you finish salting it so you can see if it's the right amount of seasoning for you. I like to turn my mashed potatoes out in a big casserole dish that way I can make them ahead of time and when I want to reheat them, all I have to do is pop them in the oven 350 degrees for about 20 minutes. If you are going to pre-make these mashed potatoes, you can always put some pats of butter on the top and then when you reheat them, they'll be little puddles of butter. <laughs> I mean, it's delightful, yes. Just a special touch. Okay, so my roast is almost done. I'm going to put together some peas from the freezer as our vegetable, and I'm going to clean up. So I'll be back when the roast is done. I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, it smells amazing. Let's see how our miso glazed pot roast turned out. It smells so good. We have this beautiful gravy here. I gotta move my other camera here so you can see it. The carrots are perfect. Look at that. The meat, the meat looks so tender. Okay. And this gravy that it makes is so good. Oh my gosh. Okay. Isn't this gorgeous? Now you saw how easy that was for me to make. It's all delicious. It's all doable. Try that miso glazed pot roast. You will be amazed at how delicious it is. And I'd like to point out, 
okay, that I didn't use any packets, I didn't use any preservatives, I didn't use any, uh, you know, heavily salted packets of this or packets of that. Um, I like to cook preservative free meals for my family and so I found all kinds of ways to do so that are delicious and easy and efficient. So please uh, follow for more. I am going to put some of this away because it's still the middle of the afternoon. I've got a few errands to run this afternoon. I gotta take my boys for haircuts, gotta do a few things. But um, I think my family's really gonna love this dinner. They always love a good hearty dinner, especially on a weeknight because they're so busy with school. And, um, and that's all. Please follow for more. And uh, also you can find these recipes and many, many more on my website, theflyingkitchen.com. Thanks so much for being here. I really appreciate it. Bye-bye.